going down. Here, let's get to work. It's another week, and you know what that means. More parts. Just took out the rear seats, and they are in surprisingly good condition. The seat bottoms come out really easily. You just pull on these tabs over here, and you lift up, and the whole thing comes out. And then the trunk carpet is actually attached to the back of the seats. Now you can probably guess what I'm gonna do next, and that is clean them up even more. This is what the interior looks like with the seats. The rear seat's removed. It's a little dark in here, but you get the idea. The main reason why I took out the rear seats in the back is so I can take out those uh, large rear quarter trim panels on both sides. These trim panels are prevalent to the fabric in the middle bubbling up and becoming unstuck from the heat. As you can see right here, this fabric is just sticking up. It's not stuck down like it should be. So I'm going to take out the rear trim panels and then bring them to a upholstery shop and hopefully they can get behind it and stick it back down. So the motto with this car is to keep things simple and original. So I'm not going to do any crazy over the top crap like I did with the RX-7. If this was my RX-7, I would not have hesitated to just rip this old 80s Toyota cloth fabric out and then put in some crazy like fancy Alcantara or whatever I did. So with that said, I'm a changed man now. I'm going down a different path. And the goal is to just keep whatever we have and try to make what we have better instead of just ripping and replacing it. Remove the rear quarter trim panels. So once I drop these panels to the upholsters, they can basically lift up these tabs and then break the panel apart. And then that way they can separate out the middle section and hopefully get behind the fabric and glue it down. This is what the inside of the car looks like now with the trim panels removed. And whoever did the swap on this car previously did a pretty good job because as you can see, the battery's relocated to the rear and they ran the ground cable on this side through the door sills, through the fender well and the positive battery cables ran through the driver's side of the car. You have to relocate the battery to the back in the first place because it originally sits in this spot but now this ECU box sits here when you do the beam swap. I'm going to try and clean up the cloth fabric here a little bit more before I drop things off. It's really old and delicate, so I can't use anything too abrasive. So I'm gonna try this dry clean upholstery cleaner to see if this thing works. Basically, you just spray it on, brush it in, and then once it dries, you just wipe it off. I just vacuumed up the seats and now I'm gonna clean it with this stuff. Tough Stuff Multi-Purpose Foam Cleaner for fabric, carpet, and vinyl. Here is the finished product. It was a little bit hard to tell if it was working well while I was cleaning it, but now that everything's dried and wiped up, it does look really good. As you can see, the color is quite a bit brighter, I think. And on this side, the bolsters had a few stains, both on the left and right, and now they're all gone. Clean the rear seat bottoms as well and the rear seat backs. So what I'm going to do now is load up the two front seats because as you can see this weird plastic vinyl backing for the seats, 
It's a little bit chipped up and ripped on this section over here. And the size is a little bit better, but still not ideal. So I'm gonna see if the shop can also help me redo this back portion as well. Going back to the rear quarter trim panels. Here's how things look after using this stuff. Just gotta stick this thing down. So I bought this upstream Bosch O2 sensor from I think a 1999 SC300. The hope is that it's a four pin connector that will just plug right into my existing harness and then I can basically replace and uh, refresh my O2 sensor. I'm usually a Bosch type of guy when it comes to O2 sensors and uh, replacing parts like that. But the funny thing is this thing's actually made in Japan. All right, I just tried it out. The connector plugged right in. So I think it should work. Buying parts for this car in general is pretty tricky. You have to be kind of creative because so many things are no longer available. So that means you have to search, you know, Japan and classify to just scour what you can. The trickiness is compounded by the fact that you have a beam swap. Blue, what are you looking at? Hmm? you have fun with that. In this box is a brand new set of lower control arms from Techno Toy Tuning. So as you can see, this one comes with a brand new ball joint pressed in. It also has a little bit of a revised design. There's these lightened holes drilled into it. Let's compare it to the old one. So you can see they made some minor revisions to it but otherwise it's the same thing. So let's be honest here. If I use the washers that I got and spaced up the castle nut on the old ball joints, it probably would have been fine. And by probably, I mean like probably 99% it would have been okay. So the truth is, I just used that as an excuse because deep down inside, I just wanted to get new control arms. I mean, these speed holes are sick. The minor design changes are cool. And hell yeah, dude, who doesn't want new parts? So in the same box, Technotoy Tuning sent me a new pair of roll center adjusters because as it turns out, the ones that I had previously, these are for specifically the stock struts. So when I tried to mock them up to the bottom of the strut, there's no way that the center bore sleeve and the alignment and orientation of it would fit. And these are the new correct ones, which are made for non-factory or aftermarket coilovers, such as the Fortune 500s that I have. And you can tell that the design is a little bit different. And these are actually about five millimeters uh, shorter in height. Sometimes you just cannot win. So these are the new lower control arms with the knuckles installed with a calcium nut. And guess what? Same problem. So the new ball joints that T3 is using looks different. It's actually a German made ball joint, which looks pretty nice, but we have the same problem as before. The car pinhole exits above the castle nut when it's torqued down. Wow, so here's the situation after torquing it down on the new lower control arms. This is after stacking three washers, you can see how far away the cotter pin hole is. So these are the new roll center adjusters from Techno Toy Tuning that they sent me, and they should be the correct ones, but there's still something a little bit weird. And these black ones right here are the roll center adjusters that were already installed on my car. And if you line these two up, you can still see that there's some misalignment. So because my old ones are already pretty much the same thickness as the new ones, I'm just gonna go ahead and keep these because they fit better. Since I'm still stuck with the whole castle nut and ball joint problem, I'm not too sure what to do with the front suspension, so I think I might just hold off. In the meantime, to keep things productive, uh, I'm gonna move along and maybe drain the rear diff. As you can see on the floor, there's definitely a leak somewhere with it. Okay, here's a diff draining. So I also started to unbolt the drive shaft from the differential and also the rear brake line as well. And once the time comes, there'll be a couple more things I won't have to do once I drop the rear end. You know the drill, more cleaning of fasteners. Just yanked out the drive shaft. It's a one piece steel drive shaft that came with the car. Here's a look at the spline yoke. Features spicer joints. 
I'm sort of doing things out of the order. As long as I keep checking things off the list, in the end, it'll all add up. For now, I'm probably gonna roll this thing back under the car just to keep it out of the way. Just scrubbed everything back here down. The car was already pretty clean, but it doesn't mean it can't be cleaner. Taking a food break, just cleaned up these caps that go on the trunk floor in the rear hatch. Don't think anybody will see it. The look at the trunk floor all nice and clean. This braille battery mount's actually really nice. So these mounting points back here are all rib nuts into the sheet metal of the wheel well. Here's a telltale sign of garage life. It's when the dust starts to accumulate. 